Hey, what's up? In this video, I wanna talk all about pH and more importantly, what it does to affect the growth of your plants. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so if you are feeding any type of um, nutrients to your plants, so for instance, if you're not growing in like an organic super soil, you're gonna wanna pay attention to pH. And even in an organic super soil, you're gonna wanna pay attention, but, um, but we're not actually feeding them nutrients directly in a super soil. But when we're using something like, uh, you know, hydroponics, cocoa, or some type of inert growing medium that does not have any nutrients in it, and you're feeding bottled nutrients, it's gonna be very important that you get those nutrients mixed up to the right pH. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about exactly why. So as you can see on my screen, I've got two different um, charts here. So one's for soil and one's for hydro, right? And essentially what we're looking at is, and, and first let's talk about what pH is. So pH stands for potential hydrogen and it's measuring the um, alkalinity or acidity of a nutrient solution. And as you can kind of see on these charts, basically as we get up to 10, it gets more acidic. Down towards one, it gets a little more, uh, and it actually goes like one to 14, right? And seven is neutral. Um, so, so as you can see, we're basically getting more acidic as we go lower and more alkaline or basic as we get up higher. And if you're looking at these charts, you can see there's two different ones. Like I said, the soil ones over here on the left, the hydro ones over here on the right. And over here on the right hand side of all of these, you can see like this purple bar up top here on the soil one is nitrogen, then we go phosphorus, potassium. Uh, and we've got all these different um, you know, macronutrients right here. Uh, and PK is what these ones are, right? Same thing with the hydro system. And then underneath them, we have all of the um, micronutrients. So we've got the macronutrients, the micronutrients. And you can see the different availability for each of them at the different pHs. So for instance, nitrogen uh, is pretty readily available throughout the in, in soil throughout the entire uh, pH spectrum, at least the one we have on here, like 3.5 to 10, right? And the same thing with nitrogen and hydro. But when we get to phosphorus, it changes. So if we were to drop our pH down over here to, let's say, um, you know, 3.5, it's almost non-available to the plant. So what these optimum pH levels are for each of these is essentially where we ideally would like to get our um, pH. That way the plant can actually take up all of the nutrients that we're feeding it. So for instance, like copper and zinc, right? If we go above like 7.5, you know, into the eight for the soil or, um, you know, copper and zinc down, it's pretty available in hydro, but uh, in soil, you can see copper and zinc kind of like slims down. So it becomes much less available. So if our pH is out of whack, the plants are not going to be getting the ideal um, or basically the nutrients that we're feeding them, especially in hydro. And you can see like manganese uh, gets very, you know, as you go higher in the pH, you're kind of losing out on what that plant can take up. Same thing with boron here. Uh, magnesium, especially as we go lower pH, like if we get into the five pH range in hydro, it's not as available, um, the magnesium, right? And you, you can just see which ones are available where. And that's really why pH is so important. So these optimum pH levels, although you don't have to have them in there, you can see where your plant can more optimally absorb all of these nutrients um, you know, more readily available. So like if we're looking at this hydro system over here, uh, obviously copper is most readily available right at like 5.2. But if we come up here, uh, manganese is a little bit not as available. Uh, and you can see basically what this, this is, is basically finding the ideal levels for each of these systems. And you can find other charts like this. I had my graphics guy whip this up for us. Uh, so it's just a real basic one. But you can really see the optimum pH levels. And you know, people will say, you know, as long as you're in the 5.5 to 6.5, you should be pretty good. And honestly, that is a very fair thing to say, because honestly, if you look in here, 5.5 to 6.5, everything's pretty much available um, to our plants 
at these levels, right? So if you do decide to, you know, bump things up a little bit higher on the pH scale, you're still going to be fine. You'll still be able to absorb those nutrients as long as you're somewhere in that, you know, 6.5, 5.5 in hydro. Um, same thing over here in soil. You can see it's actually a little bit higher. So 6.5 would be kind of ideal in the soil growing mediums, whereas hydro, it's more in the 5.5 to 6, right? So ideally, like hydro, I pH mine to like 5.8 ish when I'm growing hydro. And my soil, I'm sitting around, you know, 6.3 to 6.5 is usually where I'm pHing. Now, one thing I do want to point out, and this is something that I've actually used in flour, because um, in flour, you're going to use more of the phosphorus and potassium. So, um, you know, if you kind of like bump your pH around, so they're getting more, um, if we get it up a little bit higher, let's say in like the hydro one over here, you can see if we're bumping somewhere around like 6.3 to 6.5, we're going to be absorbing more potassium, right? So you can actually sort of uh, play with how much of these nutrients your plant can absorb by slightly shifting your pH. Now, you don't want to go way out of those range, but uh, when I used to grow hydro a lot, I would actually feed about 6.3 in bloom just so they could get a little bit more potassium, as you can see according to this chart. So that's really why pH is so important and, um, you know, didn't have to do a garden video because I couldn't really pull up uh, these charts in the garden. So that's why we're doing a, a screen share video and recording this. So um, if you have any questions about pH, you know, obviously you're just going to have to have a solid meter to measure pH uh, and then a pH and pH up, pH down to adjust those. I personally use a... Um, a HANA meter. So I, I really like that. It works great for me. I've used Blue Lab. I've used uh, anything from you know cheap meters to super expensive meters. The most important thing is keeping that probe clean, calibrated, and in a storage solution because I have definitely not kept my meters in storage solutions and they go out way quicker. And uh, if something's out of whack, you know, your pH is reading a couple points off, you could actually be at like eight instead of six. And at that point, you're like not getting any of the uh, available nutrients that you'd want to have. And it's going to throw, you know, you have pH fluctuations and some weird stuff with your pH. So that's about it for this video. Go ahead and let me know what you thought in the comments. If you got any questions, any other videos that you would like me to make, please let me know in the comments. And uh, that's it for me on this one. Hopefully you enjoyed it and it helped shed a little bit of light on the basics of why we need to be pHing our nutrient solution when we are feeding nutrients to our plants during their life cycle. So that's it for me. Bye for now.